Hello and welcome to Amara Media Corporation. I am and Nathaniel, producer of ATV Special Program. This edition of ATV Special Program is to entertain issues related to the post ceasefire scenario in a particular reference to the recent aggression of TPLF on Amhara and Afar regions. And here I am joined by a guest from Baharda University, Ato Bantayo Shifarao, political science lecturer at Baharda University. Thanks for coming here and joining Amara Media Corporation Studio. Thank you very much for having me on. Will you state the political history of uh, TPLF in reference to its objectives? Well, it's very difficult to, to, to narrate the political history of the TPLF in a short you know, in, 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 in this interview, but I can say that TPLF, the Tigrayan People Liberation uh, Front, was uh, founded as a uh, a guerrilla fighter in the 1970s and from the outset it was an Albanian socialist communist uh, rebel group uh, but its ideology was very much toxic that it considered uh, a particular an entire ethnic group as an enemy of uh, the, the Tigrayan people that it, 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 it claimed to represent so it was an Albanian socialist group when it was established in the 1970s and uh, uh, fought the Ethiopian government for about nearly de decades and captured state power in 1991 uh, in partnership with other uh, uh, centrifugal forces like the Oromo Liberation Front, the OLF, the Eritrean People Liberation Front, EPLF, and uh, had ruled Ethiopia for about for about three decades. When the TPLF was founded in, in, uh, in 1970s, it has clearly stated in its 1976 manifesto that it was a centrifugal force. It was uh, established to, to create a separate state of Tigray, a separate so out of Ethiopia. And it was based on an Albanian socialism. And, and it is also clearly stated in its uh, 1976 political program that the Amara, the entire ethnic ethnicity. The Hamara was an enemy of the Tigrayan people that the TPLF claimed to, claimed to represent. So it was, it was established as a centrifugal force, as, as a separatist group, but changed uh, um, it is vision in, in, the 19, in the late 80s and 1990s because we have, uh, we have seen uh, uh, a change in the international system. The communist camp was, so uh, you know, this, the, the, by Polar international system was over with the crumbling of the, the Eastern camp. So with, uh, with, uh, the, with the Soviet Union no longer uh, serving as a, a, a superpower. So with that, again, it has changed it, it, it its objective of uh, making the Tigray, Tigray as a separate state and also and, and capture state power uh, in Addis Ababa in 1991. So, uh, its vision has always been in a state of flux. And uh, I want you to make clarification what it has been doing uh, while it had been in power for over a quarter of a century. Since it captured state power, it has committed atrocities against, against people, against Ethiopians in, uh, in all corners of the country. But it has committed atrocities against particularly the Amaharas, uh, uh, First, by putting uh, in place a system that, that, that made uh, tens of millions of Amhara and other Ethiopians uh, stateless. Uh, it has also displaced, again, people from, from uh, their homeland from in different corners of the country. Uh, it, ha it, ha it, ha it has also put in place a political system that uh, actually suppressed uh, voice of dissent. Uh, there was torture, arrest, uh, killing uh, of Ethiopians uh, for about uh, for about three decades. It has also robbed of the uh, the, the country. Uh, uh, so uh, we had a very tyrannical role in Ethiopia under the TPLF EPRDF. Will you tell us how TPLF was removed from power? Tell the public resistance in the opposition against TPLF. We had an authoritarian system that, that did not accept uh, political pluralism, that uh, 
crushed voice of dissent. Uh, th there is no uh, level playing field for political parties, uh, civil societies, media to, 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 to operate independently and impartially. So uh, that has created uh, a popular uprising. So that popular uprising led to, was joined by some political figures in the ruling party itself, in the Ethiopian People's Revolution Democratic Front, the APRDF. So some uh, political uh, power elites even in the PRDF, uh, members of the, the Amara Democratic Party, today is Amara Prosperity Party, the Oromo Democratic Party, today is Oromo Prosperity Party. So those leaders also joined in a way the popular uprising and that created some kind of power struggle in the ruling party. So this power struggle in the ruling party in the popular protest led to the, the TPLF being uh, no, no longer being, uh, you know, uh, a dominant force in the PRDF. So that was, that is, I think that is how the, the TPLF was ousted from power. How do you see the latest military invasion of TPLF in Afro and Amhara regions? The TPLF strategy has, has not always been uh, uh, constant. Uh, it was established as a separatist force in the 1970s, and it, it changed its policy of creating a separatist of Tigray when it felt that it can rule the entire Ethiopia, and that's what it did when it captured state power in 1991. And it had established a hegemonic, uh, uh, it had a hegemonic role in, Ethiopian, in Ethiopia's political economy for about three decades. Mm -hmm. So when this, uh, when a challenge has come against its hegemonic uh, rule in Ethiopia in, in 2000, uh, t from 2014 all the way to 2018, and it was when it was ousted from power in 2018, it didn't accept that. So what it did was it had to go to to its its what it considered its base, Tigray, and begin to. Be, began to mobilize people against a cause that it actually ran when it was established in the 1970s. So that is why you see people and, and uh, you know political elites in Tigray talking about separatist state of Tigray, this and that, uh, after TPLF was ousted from power. So TPLF does not accept uh, uh, liberty, equality, and uh, justice in Ethiopia. Uh, it wants us to have a hegemonic role, if possible, in Ethiopia. If that's, if that's not possible, it wants to, to, to create uh, a separatist state of Tigray that, we, that does not consider the historical you know, uh, border of uh, administrative provinces in Ethiopia. That's why you have conflict in, in Walkai, you have conflict in Raya. Because when, when, when the TPLF uh, talks about creating a separate state of Tigray, it, it, it is based on uh, a territorial arrangement that, uh, that includes uh, Wolkite and Raya as part of Tigray. It has, it is, it, its objective has, has not always been constant. Why TPLF failed to accept the government's call to ceasefire? Well, I, I, I think uh, the TPLF still considers Wolkite and uh, Raya uh, as part and parcel of the, Tigre, uh, the territory of Tigray. So unless uh, uh, Wolkite and Raya becomes, becomes uh, part of Tigray, then uh, it claims that it's going to advance uh, its invasion towards the Samara and other regions. So I think that's the reason. TPLF is said to have dangerous agreements with Ethiopian external enemies. What, when it, what can we say about such allegation related with the past history of TPLF in the 1970s and 1980s? Uh, I think it's not just the TPLF. Yeah, uh, the, 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 the external, external actors, we, the, uh, adversaries, advers adversary states to Ethiopia have always been interested in supporting uh, every rebel group that can pose a uh, threat to the Ethiopian stability and the unity. And its PLF ha, ha, in its history has attracted uh, the support of these uh, adversary states, uh, be it in 
Arab status or, uh, or the Western countries or any other, any other state. So yes, the PLF uh, used to uh, uh, re uh, receive support from uh, other countries uh, during its struggle against the military region. And it is also receiving support from, again, a set, uh, uh, s some countries uh, in Europe or in the United States or this may be in the United States or Arab countries. But we, we, we have to understand that uh, every country operates primarily uh, based on its own uh, national interest. We have to make sure that we do not our strength, Ethiopian strength or the Ethiopian state strength comes from within not from the outside. You we have to get our houses in order. We have to create a sense of unity, solidarity among Ethiopians, regardless of ethnicity, religion, or other, other factors. It's not because Ethiopia lives strong and the support that it, it receives from the international community is that much significant to post, you know, national security to, Ethiopia, to Ethiopians. But that we, we, TPLF has created a system where Ethiopians cannot, cannot trust one another. Ethiopians cannot line up against an external enemy uh, because of that system. So we have to make sure that Ethiopians can uh, understand the toxic ideology of the TPLF, that it has it robbed of Ethiopia for about three decades. It has created uh, division along ethnic lines. It has created a system where Ethi Ethiopians fight against one another for uh, for reasons that, that that are very baffling. So, yes, it, adversary states will always support the TPLF, not just the TPLF, other separatist groups, other insurgent groups in Ethiopia. What we have to do is to to make sure that we have created. We don't have. A popula a peop we don't have a population in Ethiopia that that does not stand against a common enemy. So we have to we have to promote unity, solidarity among Ethiopians to stand against every uh, uh, dissident group in Ethiopia or adversary states. The West prefer to remain silent instead of condemning NTPLA for its atrocious attack in human rights violations, whether it was in power or at the moment. So uh, what's the reason behind their silence to condemning TPLF? Well, as I said earlier, every country, be it um, uh, Western countries, be it the United States, Britain, Germany, France, or other states, they, in their international relations, they operate on the basis of uh, protecting their own national interest. And that should not be something emotional for Ethiopians. Ethiopia also operates uh, in its international relation based on protecting its own national interest. So if we don't, we don't create, we don't communicate what has happened in Ethiopia since the TPLF uh, attacked the Northern Command of the Ethiopian National Defense Force in, in November 2020 uh, and the atrocities that it has committed since then, then the problem is not on the part of the international community. It is, we have to communicate the atrocities the TPLF has, has committed, uh, uh, not just when it, uh, since it attacked the Ethiopian National Defor De Defense Force, the Northern Command of the Ethiopian National Defor Defense Force in November 2020, but also the atrocities that it, it, it had committed when it was in charge for about 27 years in Ethiopia. So. We, we don't have to be emotional about you know, Western countries, their aid agencies, their human rights organizations, or their, you know, uh, uh, you know, their foreign ministries, you know, uh, you know, not understanding the, com the complexity of the, the problem in Ethiopia. We have to communicate that to, to the international community. But we have to also understand that every country operates on the basis of protecting its own national interest. If we don't have a government that is predictable, if we don't have a leadership in Ethiopia that is predictable, that can be trusted to work with uh, by the international community, by it be, be it the Western countries or uh, of African countries, then they will always, they are not going to stand uh, on, on your side. 
So we have to, we have to communicate our, our cause to the international community because we have the truth on our side. We have a TPLF admitting that it attacked the very force that protected the people of Tigray for about 20 years. That is what triggered the conflict in, in, in Tigray. And we have also communicated that, that the kind of atrocities, the true color of the TPLF, that the TPLF propagandists were talking about the atrocities committed uh, in Tigray. And the international community was, was, uh, was focused on uh, you know, following their uh, line of narrative. But it has, it has been clear that the, the TPLF has also committed the, the, sa the same kind of atrocities was crying against in the Hamara, in the Afar regions. So we ha really have to communicate that very well. And we have to also make sure that the international, the international community understands that we are the victim here, not the TPLF. The TPLF, during its uh, nearly three decades rule, has, has made millions of Ethiopians stateless, has arrested, tortured, killed, made forced dis disappearance in Ethiopia. And that should not be forget, forgotten because it was just ousted uh, from power in 2018. We also have to communicate that in this conflict, it's not that the Amara forces or the Ethiopian National Defense Forces triggered the conflict. It is the TPLF that, that, that started the conflict in November, mm -hmm. uh, in November 2020. And it is the TPLF that did not accept any kind of ceasefire mm -hmm. even today. So uh, I think the Western countries or the international community not talking about uh, the atrocities the TPLF has committed or the, our side of the story is not just because uh, they are supporting the TPLF, it is just because as far as I can understand, we have not communicated that very well. Mm -hmm. So it is up to the media, civil societies, foreign minister of Ethiopia, the diplomats, to communicate that, uh, that very well to, to aid agencies, uh, human rights organizations, and uh, officials of different countries. TPLF is uh, claiming as it has victory on some areas, and sometimes it is also crying. How do you evaluate its propaganda power? The TPLF, the Tigrayan People Liberation Front, literally robbed off Ethiopia mm. and made the largest finan financial out outflows in Ethiopian history mm. and ran uh, paid propaganda uh, uh, in, in this conflict. Mm -hmm. So you should not be surprised uh, when, when the TPLF uh, prevail over the Ethiopian government or other actors in Ethiopia uh, uh, with regard to its propaganda. We, you know, as I said earlier, it has <laughs> the capital resources it needs to run this kind of propaganda. So and this should not be surprising for Ethiopians. It was in charge of, it has dominated the, the economy, the politics, every aspect of, uh, uh, in every aspect. So. Uh, it runs uh, paid propaganda, so we should not be surprised if an academic from Eastern, Western universities or a journalist from, you know, cable and uh, uh, print media talks, uh, you know, uh, focus on the, P the PLF's narrative uh, 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 in this conflict. We, as I said earlier, it is up to us, uh, with our limited resources, to communicate. Uh, different actors, international community, that we are the victim here. It's up to Ethiopians. Uh, they, that we, we have to choose whether uh, we need uh, a group that creates division among, uh, among us, uh, based on ethnic and other lines, whether we, uh, we need violence uh, uh, in Ethiopia. We Ethiopians have to have to. If Ethiopians can can stand uh, to, uh, together against the Tigrayan People Liberation Front, then there is no way that the TPLF is going to stay as uh, as a meaningful uh, force in Ethiopian politics. I think uh, with it is the atrocities it has committed, uh, with the crimes that it's perpetrated 
in Ethiopia for about three decades, including in, in, in this conflict, there should not be a way that the TPLF could, could, could continue as, as a meaningful political force in Ethiopia. But that does not come uh, without, without us Ethiopians again uh, stand in solidarity uh, in communicating the two international communities, in communicating to Ethiopians that the TPLF has, has committed atrocities in Ethiopia and has weakened the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian state uh, in a way that we, we have not seen uh, in our entire history. So if we stand, if Ethiopians could, can, can, can stand together against the TPLF, and if we, the TPLF government and other actors in Ethiopia, uh, communicate you know, the, the, the truth to, to Ethiopians in the international community, there is no way that the TPLF is going to continue as, uh, as it has uh, for about three decades or so. What is expected from the global community so as to ensure peace and security here in Ethiopia? I think uh, it is expected from the international community to have an open mind in, uh, to understand the, complex, the complexity uh, that the Ethiopian situation is uh, uh, very much complicated. Uh, uh, so we, it is expected that the international community understand this, that the TPLF, uh, Tigrayan People Liberation Front, has been a ruling a, a ruling group in Ethiopia for three decades. And it is because of popular uprising, people saying no to the injustice, inequality, and suppression of uh, a voice of dissent by the TPLF, that the TPLF was ousted from power in 2018. And it is because the, the, the TPLF, the Grand People Liberation Front, attacked the Ethiopian National Defense Force on the, on the 3rd of November 2020 that Ethiopia has engaged in a conflict in Tigray. And since the conflict, the Tigrayan People Liberation Front, the TPLF, has committed atrocities, particularly against the Amaharas, as it, it, had, uh, it, had, it had done it uh, against this group for about three decades when it was in power. So, it is, it is expected that the international com community understands the, the, the position of Ethiopians, the feeling, the perception of Ethiopians uh, towards the TPLF, and also tries to, uh, and ha and the international community have a, to, uh, uh, to have an open mind in, to understand the position that the, the Ethiopian government, the, Ama the government of the Amhara region and others uh, are at. Uh, in, in this conflict. If we ignore the, the reality on the ground, uh, if we don't understand the, compli the complexity of the problem in Ethiopia, then this is a country with 110 uh, million people. Uh, so we, without a proper understanding of the, complexi the, complexi the complexity of the problem by the international community, I think uh, the peace and security of Ethiopia uh, will be will will be will be in danger, and that is not just going that is not just going to affect Ethiopia and Ethiopians. It's going to affect other states in the Horn of Africa. It's going to affect uh, Europe and uh, other countries that have interest in, in this in this part of the world. So, we I think the international community needs to I think uh, understand that. The TPLF is no longer, is not going to continue as a meaningful political force in Ethiopia and they should not make a mistake uh, in being on the side of the, the TPLF that the Ethiopians have given up on. What should be the role of academicians in revealing the sabotage that TPLF has been committing so long? The role of uh, academics, academic institutions is, uh, is very much important and in uh, revealing the factors uh, in this conflict. So the role of an academic has always been in this, uh, you know, as it is, uh, you know, searching for, for the truth. So uh, academic institutions are expected to engage in research, uh, particularly social scientists have a responsibility in finding out what actually happened uh, 
uh, in Tigray and uh, in Amhara and uh, this uh, conflict zone in Ethiopia and communicate that to the academic community and, uh, uh, and other actors in Ethiopia. I think that will, that will give some, some idea, not just uh, for the international community, uh, but also for other Ethiopians who don't have a uh, full account of what has really uh, happened uh, since the conflict started in November 2020. Atu Banta Yushfarra, lecturer of political science at Baharda University. Thank you very much for the clarification you gave me regarding the points of discussion we wrote so far. And here it brings us to the end of our today's ATV special program. Do enjoy the rest of our programs from Amhara Media Corporation. See you.